right okay so let's uh, uh, let's discuss about the recovery models guys so what is the recovery model how it is going to okay help us right so we'll discuss about the recovery models right so recovery models okay so will uh, recovery models mainly it will help you the basic definition of the recovery model is uh, controlling controlling the behavior of the log file okay controlling the behavior of the log file you can call it as a recovery model okay controlling the behavior of the log file you can call it as a, a recovery model first of all what is the behavior of the log file how you can control it what is the normal behavior of the log file any idea what's the common what log file will do generally it generates logs mm, it don't generate any logs no generates is a different kind of word see logs means there are two meanings for logs okay writing everything is also a log generating log means sometimes if any errors are there it is going to generate error log that is also log only it is going to generate the logs for that error log you can use that word generates okay generates means it is going to generate any errors are there any information is there but log file won't generate anything we have already discussed that some basic idea about the log file in the in our previous classes what log file will do what is the use of the log file we just enter the data through the log file hmm okay that's fine so as discussed earlier okay log file is the entry point of your database first thing whatever data that is coming from your application see application can be a live application application can be a ssms also your ssms is also an application guys okay so if you are inserting data through ssms if you are inserting data through ssms that will goes to log file first any database first the data will goes to log file transaction log file okay once the data is committed then only the, the the data particular data will be moved from log file to data file i told you earlier okay so all the transactions you cannot say data you have to say transactions whatever transactions in such is a one query that is a transaction all the transactions okay will be stored inside your log file okay so like insert into anything insert into student values okay imagine you are inserting some records one comma something santosh okay comma right and from hyderabad imagine this is your transaction guys this is your transaction that this we have already discussed okay so this transaction first it will goes to log file any transaction first it has to goes to log file only insert update delete whatever it might be any transaction first it has to goes to log file so in the in the transaction log file the whole transaction will be stored guys that's why we'll call it as a transaction log file why because that is going to log the transactions log what it is going to log it is going to log the transaction so that's why it is a transaction log file okay so in the transaction log file the whole transaction will be stored when this transaction is committed committed means save save saved permanently that is called commit okay if the transaction is committed then only this data will be moved to the data file guys only this data it won't move the whole transaction to the data file only the data will be moved to the data file okay so this is called your transaction in your log file transactions will be stored when the data will be moved if the particular transaction is committed then only the whole transaction will be moved there are two states for transaction one is commit second one is roll back i don't want to save this you can roll back this transaction if you don't commit it it will be roll back it will be in a roll back state undo state okay so you don't confuse guys this is the whole transaction will be stored in the log file when you commit this transaction 
this transaction will be committed means the data will be moved to the data pile if the data is completely moved to the data pile that means it will go to the disk that means this data will be saved permanently so the transaction will be committed means sorry not committed truncated from your log file guys if the data is committed from your log file to data file now there is no use of this transaction agree that's how it is going to recycle the log file if the transactions are committed then the committed transactions will be truncated from the log file so that it will create free space for other transactions so log file growth see you have to um, identify two things here log file growth will, will keep on changing sometimes it will show you 100 gb sometimes it will show you 10 gb sometimes it will show you 1000 gb sometimes it will show you 5 gb why because in that in the log file you will store the data temporarily you will store the transactions temporarily. Temporary till what time? Till what time you are going to store the transactions in the log file? Till what time, guys? Till the data enter to uh, Correct. MBS. Till the data is going to be committed. Till the data is going to be committed, the transaction will be stored in your log file. If the transaction is committed, that means if the data is moved to the data file, now there is no use of this transaction. This transaction will be truncated from your log file. So that's why if huge transactions are coming. 1 lakh transactions, 10 lakh transactions, 1 million transactions, 2 million transactions are coming. Then your log file size will grow, grow, grow. It will reach to 500 GB, 1000 GB also. If the data is slowly committed. Okay. So once the transaction comes to log file, what is their next target? It has to move to the data file. If the data is committed, then what happened? All the committed transactions will be truncated from your particular log file. Means this transaction will be removed or deleted from your particular log file. This is how the log file is going to be recycled. But the data file is not like that. Data file is keep on increasing the size. When the data file size will decrease guys? Any idea? In what scenario the data file size will decrease? You would delete the records. Correct. Correct. Excellent. If you delete the records from the table permanently, the delete also should be committed. Again, if you delete it temporarily, it won't work. That The delete should be per committed permanently. If you delete anything from your system, it will be stored in the recycle bin. If you delete from the recycle bin, then only the actual difference you can see. If you delete a 100 GB file from the system, just right click delete still you don't see 100 gb free space in the system it will be stored in the recycle bin if you recycle bin if you if you empty the recycle bin then the 100 gb will be permanently removed so that you can see that 100 gb free space will be there in your drive okay so in that scenario only your data file size will vary okay but uh, usually data file size will keep on increasing if you delete the records then only the data file size will be okay uh, decreased guys otherwise usually data file size won't be changed if you keep inserting data the data file size is going to increase guys okay so this is how this is the log file behavior is it clear guys everyone any any issues any doubts here please okay done so Sir, one question, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, in the log file, hmm. so after the transactions are committed, so yes. log file will be empty. So, yes. will it be completely empty after the transaction? Empty. Yes, correct. See, it's not like that. It's empty only. I agree with you. But the thing is, if it is a live production database, transactions will keep on coming. Okay. At least in any yeah. format, the transactions will keep on coming into the database. So don't think empty means completely it is free. Yes, it, it can be completely free if there is no data flow. If there is no transaction flow. It can be completely free, but the size will be there, right? See, in the notepad, if you if you if you just create one notepad with a one MB, okay. If you delete the notepad, at least it will occupy some space, right? I mean, like the data in the notepad. I am not saying delete the notepad. If you delete the data in the notepad, even though the file is there, if there is no data in the log uh, in the notepad, but still some file will be occupied by the notepad, right? The notepad size can't be zero, right? At least one KB, right? It will be. Yeah. 
right so that is how it is going to manage if the transactions are coming yes the lock file size will increase if there is no transaction flow it will occupy some size but there will be a free space in that particular file size okay sir you said it is free okay so why don't it will be a zero any file can't be zero at least some size will be there for that particular file okay in that file 8 MB is there. In that 8 MB, 7 MB is free. 1 MB it was occupied. Like that, if there is no transactions, might be there will be a free space in the lock file. But size would be there, guys. Any questions? Uh, sir, if we get any 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 issue like uh, the lock file is increasing, so hmm. what will be the solution that is different thing. That? that is the different thing. That's not now. So we are not going to discuss now. Only only for the transaction. You have to shrink okay. the log file. Right, you have right. to shrink the log file. Okay. If you shrink the log file, whatever committed data is there, it is going to be truncated and it is going to be released unused space. Okay. Usually, committed data will be truncated automatically from the log file. If you shrink it, then it is it is going to release the unused space from your log file to the OS operating system. That you have to shrink it. Okay. So shrink is the easy thing. Only right click on the database. Okay. You can go and you can shrink it. So you can see a lot of my videos, okay, how to shrink a log file, how to shrink a data file in our YouTube channel. So if you want to shrink it, usually we'll go to the right click of the database. Okay, and let me bring this online. Tasks. Okay, so tasks, shrink, files. Okay, uh, you have to choose which file you want to shrink, data file or log file. You have to choose the file name. And you can see here total size is 8 MB in that uh, uh, 6 MB is free. Of course, we are not going to get per 1 MB, 2 MB, per 100 MB. Don't, no need to shrink. You have to shrink uh, at least uh, 10 GB free space is there. At least in worst case, 5 GB free space is there. For MBs and all, no need to shrink it, guys. Okay. So that was explained in, the, in my uh, old videos. If you have any doubt how to shrink it, go and watch those videos. Go to my YouTube channel. Just type shrink. Mm -hmm. Just the shrink, you right. can get a lot of videos. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, so, will it be sh like a compress the data? No, uh, while we no. shrink, no, it won't compress okay. the data. Okay, it see, okay. it will be like uh, imagine you inserted uh, one lakh transactions. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the log file size will grow to 10 GB. Okay, imagine. Yeah. So now all yeah. these one lakh transactions are committed. Okay. So committed means what mm -hmm. happened once the transaction is committed as discussed the transactions will be truncated from the log file right log file. so no. uh, if the transactions are committed if the transactions are truncated from the log file still the 10 gb won't come back again okay earlier the file size is 10 gb whole 10 gb is occupied now once the on lag transactions are committed all the transactions will be truncated from your log file, but still the 10 GB file won't be shrinked by itself. Okay, the file size is 10 GB only, but available free space is more. Now you can see out of 10 GB, 1 GB is occupied, 9 GB free space you can see. Once it reaches to one point, it, come, it, it don't come back again. Okay, you have to shrink it to come back. Got it? Right, sir. So we have to take care about each and every log file because uh, transactions that's, are that's the different happening. thing. See, that's the different thing that will be okay. That can be taken care by the jobs. Sometimes we'll we'll set up jobs. That job will mm -hmm. shrink it, or if it creates any problem, we'll we'll create some alerts on which database it is creating a problem on which database the log file is full. We'll create a we'll get an alert to our particular database team queue. Then we have to log into that server and we have to shrink the database. Some people will create jobs. That job will shrink automatically all the log files in a regular intervals. Okay. Right, sir. Done. So this is the behavior of the log file, guys. This is the behavior of the log file. So your recovery model is going to control that behavior. How it will control that behavior? We have three recovery models, guys. Full recovery model, control Z full recovery model bulk log recovery model simple recovery this is an interview question guys i am sure you will get a recovery models question interview question so 
in full how the log file will behave in bulk logged how the log file will behave in simple how the log file will behave it's a like kind of a, you we know ceiling fan right ceiling fan we are going to use the ceiling fan okay right so uh, there are modes there are modes in the ceiling fan if you if you put in one okay it, it will it will what we can say it will rotate slowly if you increase the speed if you if you keep it in uh, second level again it is going to increase the speed and all then third then fourth then five okay so you can you can change the uh, what is that called guys what is that uh, that machine guys what is that ceiling fan we will have no one knows the thing from there are a lot of people from electronics <laughs> 